Is the Formula Drift car better than the same car with the same upgrades and the same tune? Just the normal car? Let's find out. Everybody knows that the Formula Drift cars in Forza Horizon 5 drift unnaturally good for cars in the game. But what we need to find out is can we make a stock C6 Corvette with the same upgrades and the same tune drift just as good as this thing? Or is there something about these cars that's special? Maybe some unknown characteristics that we don't exactly get to see? Or maybe it's something that they tuned into the game that is unchangeable? Let's find out. So we're gonna make sure this guy is stock before we do anything too crazy. Now when we look in my cars in our current car, we can see that it has 1,050 horsepower, has 850 foot-pounds of torque, it weighs 3,008 pounds, and it's 50-50 and it's weight distribution, which is pretty sweet. That's really good for a car like that. So what we need to do is try and copy these exact stats and the exact tune over onto a normal Corvette C6 and see if we can make it drift just as well. But before we start kitting out our other C6 Corvette, we need to do a test run with this guy. We will see on the mountain how good of a score I can get with this. I'm going to try and keep the runs fairly similar. That way we have a decent metric to see how they compete against each other uh, with the same tune. And then in the end, we are going to see which one's better. And then if one or the other is better, we're going to try and make the other car, whether it be the stock C6 or this Formula Drift C6, just as good as the other one so we can equal the score with it. Now in reality, the best type of drifting in this game is, is going to feature an all-wheel drive car with all of the power going to the back wheels and the dis the diffs this i can't talk the diffs the differentials locked all the way to 100 percent both front and back under acceleration and then zero percent under deceleration the toe will be all the way out and the camber will be all the way no the camber will be all the way out and the toe will be all the way in the caster angle will be at seven degrees the back tires will be as like as full as they will get and then the front tires will be right around 30. That's going to be your best and easiest to handle drift car. This one just has like a typical, I mean, it has a formula drift tune on it as far as I'm aware. I think that's exactly what they run in real life. Now, this car is very easy to handle, but it is kind of hard to keep super, super sideways. Uh, it likes to drive itself forward a lot. I think that's because the back tires are at 17 PSI and you're spinning them and it's, I don't know, it's just the way this car is set up. It kind of likes to push itself really far into the corners. So you can't take them super sharp you have to keep correcting yourself at least i do but the way i drive it should be even we should be able to see how close the cars are together uh when we build the other c6 so far not doing too bad we should be able to reach oh we should be able to reach over a million with this car on the way down but i'm not so sure about the c6 with this same tune on it the regular c6 all right here we are approaching the end a million million and two thousand that's not too bad um i obviously can do more than that i did more than that with a morris freaking traveler the other day that's cool so let's build that c6 and see how close we can get it to come to a million and two for the purposes of this video we are going to buy a new c6 a brand new one instead of using one that i already have set up as a drift car and you know what we're gonna throw the formula drift livery on it just because if we can find it there's our fd livery um it's definitely not exact and it looks pretty terrible compared to the other one because the other one's almost exact or it is exact rather this one's not even close but let's do some upgrades and see if we can get it to be somewhat similar we can't put the seven liter in it but we can do the 6.1 or the 6.2 i think is what it is so that's what we're gonna do uh, i believe the other one is turboed i just checked it is turboed so we are not getting the seven liter however we can get as close to everything else as we can the other one we know has drift tires on it and the front track width is out as far as it will go but the back is not i know that from working on the other one that i turned into a race car all right with a fully built 6.2 we can only get 977 horsepower so we're gonna go with something a little bit different and hope that we can get somewhat close to it I actually just looked the other motor is supercharged and this one is twin turbos we are not switching it out for v10 or v12 i thought it was either v10 or v12 or i thought it was two more v8s but obviously it's not but we're just gonna do our best here the front tires on the drift camaro are actually thinner than this they're 265s and the rears are 285s so uh i guess we're just gonna roll with what we got the thinnest tires we can all right, in the end, we are a couple horsepower short. Uh, I don't know what our foot pounds of torque are. We weigh a little bit more. We weigh about 110 pounds more. Our weight balance is not exactly the same and it's probably not gonna get anywhere close to it, but this is as close as we can get while staying true to the engine. Uh, we do have some advantages over the other car. 
being that we have fatter tires. But now, we're going to copy the tune, run it down the mountain, and see how similar they are with the same tune on it. Alright, we've basically got the tune set exactly as the other one is. The alignment and everything's the same, the anti-roll bars are the same. The springs are not exactly the same, these two don't exactly match up. The rear is much softer on the other car, and this the rear sits at 4.6 on the other car, but the front is right where it's supposed to be at, and this one is 0.3 below where it's supposed to be at. Other than that, everything else is exactly the same as it was on the other car. Now let's see how we do going down the mountain. I'm honestly not expecting much. I'm not expecting it to be near as controllable or near as good on the point scale, to, just to be honest. Uh, this car already does not, ooh, does not handle as good as the other one, but I will be doing my best to ensure that we get a similar score, or I will just be doing my best to ensure that this car stays on the track, really. We may end up getting a better score because this one doesn't like to get near as sideways, but it likes to hold it sideways better, which is interesting to me. I don't know why that would be, but if this car, stock car, ends up being better than the other one, I'm going to blame it purely on the tires because the tires are bigger on this car than the other one. And they're stock tires, which is surprising to me. So far, not too bad. It doesn't like to turn in as much as the other car does, but it does like to hold it sideways. It's actually not too different. It's still, it, the handling's a little bit different. I prefer the other car's handling ever so slightly more than this one, but they are very, very similar. Our scores, as far as I'm aware, are not too far apart from what they were last time. Maybe I'll throw an overlay on the screen, like a, a, a third or something. So you can see what our score was coming through here last time but so far i feel like they're fairly similar you know the longer i drive this car the more i prefer it i almost think that this one feels better now that i've been driving it for longer maybe it's just the fact that it turns and stays into the turn better i don't know it's kind of weird the turning in is still a little bit more difficult once the car is straight but if we keep it just sideways and we keep her going sideways it's not bad. Not bad at all. I honestly did not expect this to be working out as well as it is right now. You know what? This is really coming down to the wire. This is very close. Oh, and I'm going to spin it right here on this last corner. Go me. I've had two screw-ups in each run. Not too bad. Dude, 4,000 points different. There's nothing I can do to make up 4,000 points besides not screw up that last corner. When I did it with the Formula Drift car, I screwed up two of the first corners. I took them wider and kind of tapped the rear end and slowed the car down, which made us lose points. And then on this one, I ended up doing much like bigger crashes. So all in all, in the end, what I have to take away from this is that these cars are exactly the same. Our score on this track was within 4,000 points, which in reality, the margin of error for that is more than that. Basically, what I'm saying is if I wanted to take this car down the mountain right like again now back to back, I would get more than a million and two thousand points with it, which means that these cars are exactly the same. This is honestly blowing my mind because that means that the Formula Drift cars with the same tune as the regular cars are exactly the same. The Formula Drift cars are no no different at all other than they look better because they look more like the drift cars. They have the actual body mods and stuff that the other cars have, but they can't be raced. Which means that if you want to drift a C6 Corvette, you should drift a regular C6 Corvette because you can also race it. You can turn this car into an actual race car, but you cannot turn the Formula Drift car into a race car. No, sir, we already tried that. That's right where the idea for this video came from was that video. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have had my mind thoroughly blown today just to find out that this regular C6 can perform just as well with the same tune as the Formula Drift car. The PI points on this car are very, very close to the other one. I believe they're, it's either one or two points off, which is nothing, really. And our margin of error is more than the difference scored between each car. There was 4,000 points difference between this car and the Formula Drift car going down the mountain and... That's all down to one turn not being screwed up compared to the other. Like, that's that's 4,000 points is nothing when you're close to a million points coming down that mountain. So, uh, my mind is blown. If you guys want a good drift car, all it takes is a good tune. There's no difference between the Formula Drift car and the regular cars. 
other than the looks and you can't race the formula drift cars as well as you can the normal ones i hope you guys enjoyed this video that was that's crazy it's still blowing my mind but thank you for watching and i will see you later